Hi, my name is Lynn. I am a registered dental hygienist and a nurse ambassador. I've been a dental hygienist for almost 16 years now, and I've actually worked at um, Dr. Nakamura's prosthodontic office ever since I graduated from school. So the patient that you'll see today um, is a patient that I've seen for the last 16 years here. Uh, her name is Jean, and she'll show you her operator. <laughs> Dr. Stanley Nakamura, a prosthodontist in La Jolla, California. I graduated from the University of Southern California in Los Angeles, and I did a uh, one-year residency and two-year fellowship at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Today, we're fortunate to have our patient, my long-term patient, Jean, explaining her experience with her adenoid cystic carcinoma, surgical removal, and her experience with the prosthesis called an obturator. Her surgical site is maybe easier to see on a skull. She received a partial maxillectomy, which is in this portion, part of the vomer, the pterygoid plates, and the remaining dentition on the upper left. Her premaxilla, we were able to maintain it, and she received a split thickness skin graft to support her lateral tissue, and it formed a little scar band which helped to support her obturator prosthesis. So Jean will talk to us about her experience here. It's been more than 30 years since I first went to a dentist who in a regular teeth cleaning session remarked about a, a tumor that was hanging down from the roof of my mouth. It looked like a marble suspended in a membrane. He sent me to an oral surgeon the oral surgeon removed the tumor and first told me it was not malignant. Then later, a Russian pathologist uh, said that it was malignant. It was diagnosed as an adenoid cystic carcinoma. Fortunately for me, a very slow growing, non-aggressive tumor. I mean, it's been 30 years, right? So uh, then I went to an oncologist who removed uh, my entire left Maxilla, that's my entire left upper jaw. So then that had to be replaced because I was a school teacher and I had to be able to speak and use my voice and my tongue and all that to, to speak. So I went to Dr. Stanley Nakamura who crafted uh, a very wonderful obturator for me that replaces the roof of my mouth and the whole upper left maxilla area and I went back to teaching and uh, I was able to speak and to resume teaching fine. So Jean ever the school teacher is helping us to educate other people. This is removing her obturator. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this replaces the upper left maxilla and her upper left dental arch. This is a picture inside her mouth, a little difficult to see. So what we're seeing are the turbinates in the line of her maxilla. This is scar band from her skin graft which helps to support the obturator. And place it back. Can you shine the light back here? So you might be surprised to know, Jean, there were two very famous individuals who also shared an experience like you. Oh. One was the President of the United States, Grover Cleveland. Oh. His surgery was so secretive because there was a silver panic when he was in office. So his surgery was performed on a yacht and the public didn't know for 20 years afterwards. Wow. Also Sigmund Freud, huh? you remember the famous psychiatrist? <laughs> he also had an adenoid cystic carcinoma. Wow. He had surgery, but he had many, many problems with his obturator. Uh-huh. He called his prosthesis the monster. Oh, all the problems that he had. Yeah. He wasn't as happy as you.
this is Gene's operator. It's a metal base. And it's specially designed to close this area where she had her cancer tumor removed. So this is acrylic resin. These are specially made clasps to hold the teeth. Sometimes an operator is used because somebody is born with a defect in the palate and they need some kind of a replacement. Sometimes it's because of an infection and they lose part of the palate. It could be from a gunshot wound or like in Jean's case, it's from cancer surgery. So all these elements of prosthodontics are used to develop the shape of the obturator, the clasping, and the filling of what we call the defect area. So after you had your obturator made, Jean, um, how, has, how did it change you? Well, to begin with, it allowed me to keep working as a teacher and receiving a paycheck, which is extremely important for me, being a single mother with three children. Mm -hmm. And I would not have been able to return to teaching. I don't know what I would have done if I had not had my obturator. I'm very, very grateful to him. My speech and my eating are just about normal. Um, I can eat anything, and I eat a lot of things that I should not eat, like <laughs> potato chips and popcorn and things that are very hard on my obturator. And I, I will now appreciate it more and, and eat those things less and less. How's your range with, of motion with the obturator and your um, jaw? The range of motion is slightly limited but I think it's about an 80% and I can live with 80%. That's wonderful for me. Is it difficult to take care of your obturator? No, it is very easy. I just remove it at night and put it in the polydent uh, water and, um, and, and put it back on in the morning. It's very simple. Photograph of Jean's oral cavity her existing condition without her obturator prosthesis in place. So one can imagine without the sealing of the heart and soft palate, food and fluid would come out through this cavity through the nose. Also air would escape and she would not be able to speak properly. So this is a representation of her midline. This is her middle turbinate. This is the lateral scar band and this is her posterior pharyngeal wall. So when I was in school, I never learned about the obturator. I had no idea what it was, uh, why somebody would need one, or how I would even clean someone's teeth with half of their maxilla missing. As a hygienist, we're trained to clean people's teeth with all of their structures intact. So when you see someone for the first time, it can be a little disconcerting to see part of their maxilla missing. Hopefully this video will help you be prepared and develop a strategy to when you do encounter someone with an obturator's prosthesis or a hard or soft palate defect.